and welcome to another video. Today we will be painting this Arabian horse that I resculpted. If you missed that, check out my last video. In that video I mentioned that this Krylon primer was actually the 2-in-1 prime and paint, which does not work for airbrushing, so a moment of silence for all the sanding I had to do. But once I primed it with the regular Krylon primer and sanded forever, and reprimed, and resanded, and reprimed, it was time to airbrush. I am using this Aztec airbrush with changeable nozzles. Unfortunately, I don't think they make these anymore. I've decided to do a dapple gray for this paint job, so I'm covering this primer with white. For paint I'm using this Model Air Acrylic Airbrush Paint. You technically don't need to thin it, but I like to use a little reducer anyway. Once I have the white base, I can start the shading. This is probably my favorite part. I start off very subtly with a very light gray so I can get a feel for it as well as to add more depth. I make sure to have pictures of real dapple gray horses on hand for reference, even though the dapples will be done later on. It's important to shade the mane and tail too for dimension. Now I can go in with the darker gray, adding smaller shading. I'm not going too dark with this dapple. Did you know that gray horses go from dark to light as they age, just like us? But it can be pretty drastic. So our Arabian here is a little older, but not old enough to be completely white.
can do the black parts. For some extra detail, I'm making the tips of the hair a brown color, like you can see in this sand illusion here. Once that's dry, I seal her with a Mr. Super Clear matte spray, and here's how she's looking. The Mr. Super Clear is important for this next step, adding the dapples. It will give the pastels a texture it can stay on. Paying extra close attention to my reference photos, I apply the gray pastel with my makeup brush. I'm using the Pan Pastel brand. Then taking a kneaded eraser, I make a point and take up the pigment where I want the dapples to be. This is my first time using this technique, so it's not perfect by any means, but luckily it's pretty forgiving if you mess up and need to restart. Once I have decent coverage with the gray, I add another layer of Mr. Super Clear to seal it in so I can do the black layer without worrying about smudging it, but also is to build pigment. I lightly go over the dapples with no pigment on the brush to blend them in slightly.
Once I have sealed everything again, I can start the details. I need a white base for the vines and roses so that the color is more vibrant. I'm using Golden Brand acrylic white paint and thinning it slightly with water to prevent the brush strokes. You can see just how good this paint is on the blaze. It's so crisp with just one coat and it's been thinned with water. Her blaze is only visible where the muzzle gets dark, so I blend it up with water. I do another coat of everything to make sure it's nice and bright. For the hooves, I heavily dilute this Liquitex acrylic paint and do several washes. Adding the striping and detail to the hooves is kind of hard to explain, but basically I water down paint, do streaks, and then further blend it with more water. I do this with browns, grays, and white, and then repeat till I'm happy.
little bit of white to the top of the hoof for extra detail. Now for the eyes. I make sure to paint in the whole thing white and then paint in the pupil. I find it's much more natural shape than to just paint the corner white. Plus you get a good base if the eye is lighter. In this case though, they will be a dark brown, so I just add the brown in last, in a little swoop at the bottom of the pupil for a hint of color. Finally, we can do the roses. It's exciting to see all the little details come to life. I'm doing an orangey red, making sure to keep the paint thin to save the details. I do the vines the same way. I did go back and forth on the shade of green a few times between coats. I go back in and shade the roses, giving them more dimension.
I also add little highlights. I decided the legs weren't quite dark enough, so I did some final touch-ups with more pastel. Can't forget the little nose blush. I should have added a little bit more peach pigment since it's more of a cool pink, but now I know. Finally, I can seal everything in. I'm using a Krylon satin spray since I want a little shine but not full gloss. I cannot stress enough that the weather needs to be perfect for this. I lucked out and got a nice day with low humidity. You'll want to do a few light coats, letting them fully dry in between and of course using a proper mask. Now I can paint the horseshoes. I don't really recommend nail polish, but it's what I had on hand. I much prefer Tester's Model Silver, but in a pinch this is fine. It's just important to clean your brush off. I almost forgot to paint the chestnuts, so I do that really quick. Lastly, it's time to gloss the eyes and nostrils. By getting in front of the camera, of course. Oops. I also made a base, but I will be doing a separate video for that, so stay tuned. And now we're all done. Here's how she looked before. And here's the after. I'm so happy with how she turned out. I know she's not perfect, but I definitely learned a lot, and I hope you did too. Thank you for watching. Make sure to boop that like button and subscribe for more videos.